was stupid, but whatever. <laughs> Hello internet, my name is Mark and I can type around an average of 160 words per minute and today I am back with yet again another typing video. Today's content is gonna be what feels to be like pointless almost, but it's gonna be largely about comfort and things that have improved my typing experience and just general work experience, honestly. I, I say this for two reasons. One, nothing in this video is based on research. I am not a certified PT or medical professional or even remotely close to one of those things. This is solely based on what has been comfortable for me, anecdotes and things I've heard multiple times in and out of typing situations. Number two is that this entire video can not only be abbreviated into a short sentence or two, but it's also generalizable for more than just typing. That is stretch your hands and wrists throughout the duration of your typing practice, which goes to say, stretch your hand and wrist, get up and walk around as you work throughout the day at your desk if your job, or <laughs> you're like me and a student, requires you to be at your desk for most of the day. Whether you're typing fast for practicing for long periods of time or working at your desk for a large duration of the day, a good keyboard and mouse setup is just as essential to letting your eyes relax at something 20 feet away or getting up and walking around every once in a while. I'm also someone with a long history of wrist issues, but I'll get into that later. Anyway, I will be speaking in the context of typing practice, but do feel free to take this information and generalize it for what your situation might be because honestly, Doing these things for typing has helped make my life as a student easier, whether it's long periods of essay writing or long periods of programming. You can generalize it to your own situation, but nonetheless, let's get into it. So the first thing I wanna talk about is your setup. And I started the script like this because I think it's the most general part. I've gotten questions and comments before, which is why I'm making this video about whether I keep my hands above my keyboard or resting on the table. And your setup is a large part of that. Is your keyboard too high up? Is it too low? Find something that's comfortable for you. Keep in mind, are you more comfortable with your wrists like this or are you more comfortable with your wrists like this? Personally, I would recommend keeping your hands off the keyboard for two reasons. One, and again, not research backed, but I imagine it helps prevent against carpal tunnel. If your wrists are bent up at a far angle for too long, that is, I believe, a large part of the reason why so many people get carpal tunnel or wrist problems. Your wrists are not supposed to stay like this and move around. They're supposed to be straight. Tilting your wrists upward, long story short, can cause an issue. That's part of the reason why I've strayed from mechanical keyboards because they require me to do this. But if I keep my wrists above them, then my, my wrist, wrist posture, wrist straightening? I don't have a word for it, but <laughs> it's a little better when you hold it above. Reason number two is because by holding your wrists above the keyboard, it branches into having a good posture. I recently have had an issue with my shoulder and that is that they're too far forward. And a large part of the reason is because I'm putting too much weight on it. I will lean forward on my desk and lean my elbow in. If I keep a focus to keep my wrists above my keyboard, that means nothing is on the desk at any point. And if I'm straying away from leaning forward like this, then I'll be more inclined to reach back and properly bring my shoulder blades together, keep my hands above the keyboard and not feel the temptation to keep my elbows down. All in all, this one thing causes a chain reaction of making sure you don't lean on your desk because that will make you slouch like this. And if you're like me and have shoulder problems, bring your shoulders forward like this. From there, I believe my posture has genuinely been improving and it helps me focus more on keeping my shoulder blades back, which again, is something personal to me, but would recommend if you uh, want something to be conscious of. Now, in regards to typing, I would also recommend keeping your hands above the keyboard. Honestly, it's probably a comfort thing. Prefer the hands above the keyboard for the reasons I just mentioned, but also taking drawing lessons has taught me that it's more than just the wrist, but your elbow and your shoulder. All of those three joints, or I guess points of motion, I should say, are involved in drawing and can be involved in drawing. And when you're typing, if your wrists are stationary, you're inclined to stretch your wrists in potentially damaging degrees. Keeping them above the keyboard can make them move a little more flexibly and perhaps faster. I think in a past video, I've said the exact opposite, but it just goes to show that A, things change over time and B, it's largely what is most comfortable for you. I think if you have your keyboard and mouse set up at a good height, when you keep your wrists above the keyboard, it can help avoid carpal tunnel problems. It can help you improve your posture and it might be the thing that takes your typing to the next speed. Next up is posture. <laughs> this is just more of a conscious note. I think everyone is like, oh, my posture is either really bad or really good, but it's important to keep it in mind. Your feet should be flat on the floor, back straight, shoulder blades back, arms forward. I've been going to PT recently and posture has been a big part of it all. In fact, I took the back off of my chair so that I wouldn't be leaning back and putting my legs up on the things below my, my desk. It's just a weird little stool now. It's not easy to maintain a good posture. It is genuinely tiring, but it does passively work on a good core and just 
good posture. It's uncomfortable and it will take a while, but even in the last two or so weeks of having this thing off of my chair, I've noticed that I'm much more mindful and my feet are more often flat on the floor and I'm working on the things that I've been advised to work on from my PT sessions just by sitting at my desk all day. There are also a bunch of sites that are typing oriented that explain the need for good posture when it comes to typing. So feel free to check one of those out, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. All in all, while a bad posture might not uh, change your typing speed, it'll definitely help you stay relaxed as you maybe have a long session of typing practice or you're working on a paper or something like that. In the long run, it is a lot more comfortable. And lastly, the main point of the video today and what the title of this video was originally going to be is proper stretches for typing. This one's the most anecdotal. When I was doing a challenge in February of 2020 to get to 180 words per minute. I didn't hit it, but I did go from 140 to 160. One of the things I noticed was that because I wasn't hitting the left A key with my pinky, there was a lot of strain in my left wrist because I was holding it up. And just between tests and before, stretching my wrists really simply like this helped relieve a lot of that strain. So I did a bit more research into actual typing stretches. The first thing I came across was this uh, picture here of stretching for artists. And that was the first big one that helped. One of my favorite stretches, putting your hands together like this and bringing your hands down without bringing your, your elbows or shoulders down. I'll put a link to the tweet in the description. And then other stretches that I found are from a website called Derby. I mentioned this in a bunch of videos, I believe, but definitely check those down below. Here are some sample images of them. And especially if you're sitting all day doing long sections of typing, whether it be a test or an essay or coding, it's definitely really important to keep your wrists moving and stretched out. When it comes to specifically typing, I would definitely recommend shaking your hands out, stretching your fingers back for 15 to 20 seconds seconds getting your wrists moving both forward and back I really don't know the specific advantages to helping with typing and if I did a before after test I would obviously be biased because I already believe that stretching helps but all in all it's more comfortable throughout your typing sessions or whatever between tests just pull back for 10 seconds pull back for 10 seconds if you're waiting for the next test to begin and you've got eight seconds just sit here and just do this, pull down for 10 seconds. Get your fingers moving. Touch typing is super important. I have a video about that here. I never remember, I think it's here. Finger mobility is super important and doing these stretches will help your hands warm up, I guess. Again, no scientific research, I just this is why I think it helps. So yeah, the typing stretches are super quick and easy. You just pull back here, pull back here, stretch out the tendons in your hands. Technically tendons don't stretch actually, but you get the point. After years of typing and piano and boxing, my wrists have taken so much abuse. This video felt slightly redundant when I was writing it, so I sort of try to generalize it towards work. So I do hope this helps people uh, who are at their desks working all day, whether or not you're practicing typing or coding or writing or editing or whatever it might be. I'll never forget this comment here from my first typing video that got pretty large. I've gotten comments since about typing and stretching. So here we have this video. If you have any other ideas for typing or things you want to hear me talk about, feel free to leave a comment down below. I've got a playlist here about more typing videos. The last one is probably the best one I've made so far. It just talks about how if you feel stuck at typing, you're not actually stuck. A few drills to help you get unstuck and perhaps a little bit of a mindset shift for you in case you are thinking that you can never get out of the rut you're in. Thanks for sticking around. Don't forget to turn the subscribe button down below from red to gray if you have not already. And if you're willing to stick around, watch another video. But if you told yourself this would be the last video before you went and do something, uh, go ahead and do that something. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you next week.